Yeah, we played against Argentina in 1988 and I scored the first goal. What a cracker. Two yards out. It's given, it's Wade. What a start. Questionable offside, but hey, the Argentinian defender, he was the one who pushed the ball forward. That's why it wasn't offside. Martin Tyler got it wrong. He said there was a suspicion of offside. There was no suspicion at all. Well done, assistant referee. You got it perfectly right. Um, I went running around all the, the advertising boards. This guy was so happy. He's jumped over the fence. We're hugging each other. Andy Pascalini said that the security came over, grabbed him and threw him out. <laughs> He's missed three goals and they were the reigning world champions. 1986, this was in 88. I'd been dropped from the Socceroos for the two games before. Uh, Argentina. So I wasn't going into this game very confident at all that I would even keep my position on the ground. In the build-up to this, the expectation was that they were going to hammer us with Diego Maradona at the uh, at the helm. So I was given the job two weeks out. Yes, you are marking Diego Maradona. Whoa, I didn't get a week of sleep for two weeks because I'm thinking of all the things that he did for Napoli and Argentina, scoring goals against England. You name it, I'm, uh, I'm really freaking out. But Eddie Thompson gave me a couple of videos of his last two games. So that's what I did. I just watched those. And it calmed me down a little bit. I wasn't thinking about the Maradona against England. I was thinking about his last two games in these World Cup qualifiers. So, yeah, for me, uh, very stressful. But when he arrived, it was all about him. Forget about the AFL and NRL Every news bulletin was about him. The night before, we had a bit of a practice match and somebody spotted somebody right at the top of the stand in the corner. It was a spy. It was an Argentinian spy. So uh, we've all gone nuts and got to the gear steward and said, quick, go and get that sniper up there in the top corner of the stand. It was just so dramatic. When we got to the ground, the atmosphere was brilliant, the noise, the colour. I'm standing there into the, in the tunnel and he's standing there. He's only about that big. And I, I thought, now, do I look tough or do I uh, say something encouraging? And you know what I did? I went, happy birthday. Because it was his birthday and I thought, that'll put him off. I'm thinking, oh, now he's freaking out. He's going, what? World Cup qualifier and he's wishing me a happy birthday. When the game started, it was, I'm standing next to arguably the greatest player ever to play the game. Um, wow. And I pushed him over and he fell over quite easy. I mean, you don't just, you don't knock Maradona over unless you've given him a shove with a truck. But he'd fallen over and I apologised. Sorry, Diego. Uh, he didn't speak a word of English, but that was my gesture. And he got up and went, as if to say, uh, like, oh. so for the whole game, I walked around. Yeah, I got a couple of tackles in. Uh, the one tackle I did win, they scored a goal from. Uh, he was going down the right-hand side. I just got across and tackled him. The ball went to Milan Ivanovic. Maradona got up, chased it, got it off him, crossed it. They scored. Maradona's pinpoint cross. Well, we're just on about Andy, weren't we? Bosnich hasn't touched the ball all game. Maradona hardly been in the game. But uh, that is the beauty of him. Just one movement that he's been involved in. One opportunity or half chance. And they put it away. And uh, Socceroos have got to now just uh, not, not to be put down. They've had a, so far an excellent first half. Just to get their composure back. Devastated. But I look at some of the footage and I go, I really had no chance. He was just toying with me. I can't imagine what it would have been like playing against the 86 Maradona. I got him when he was coming back from a drug suspension. And there were times where I just went, wow. Slater inside for Zilic. He's looking for the runner and it's a good run from Vidmar. Tony Vidmar inside. And when Vidi put the ball in the back of the net and took off somewhere, there was just Ned Zelich stand. I was so knackered. I wasn't going to come 
chased Vidmar over there. So I just grabbed hold of the Ned Zelich and just, wow. But the noise was unbelievable, you know? Um, and I'm sure there's lots of sportsmen out there who would have experienced it. And, and you don't take it in at the time but you replay it in your mind over and over again, and you can hear it over and over again. There was tension there after we scored that goal. Come on, boys, we've got to hang on to this. We want some result. That's the sort of, oh, tell you what, it, uh, I do it again and again and again, and still feel the same sickness over and over again. I look back at that first game and we scared the living daylights out of them. We really did. I guess the, the, the thing that disappointed me was that I didn't get to swap his shirt on the ground in front of everyone. I'd walked around, run around after him for 90 minutes in that first game. I wasn't going to let him go without getting his shirt. So I went and stood outside the dressing, their dressing room and just waited He's got to come out sometime or somebody's got to go in and get that shirt because I'm not moving. And fortunately, somebody went in, got it, brought it out. And I went, yes, I've got a Maradona shirt. Um, and I use it. I use it to talk to kids and adults uh, when I'm doing my presentations. It was great fun. It was nerve wracking to get beat the way we did. <laughs> With that own goal, Alex Tobin chipped it over Zabika into the back of that. Well, that's what I tell him anyway, when they score that goal away from home. Um, I remember after the game, Graham Arnold was in tears. You know, it was so emotional. We've done so much. We'd spent, we'd gone to Europe twice and we went to uh, Asia and we played games at home and to be beaten by an own goal, it just, the tears came. You know, um, it, we were devastated. And after the game, I, re I remember this. Final whistle went. I saw one Aussie flag in the corner and I said, you know what, boys, let's go and applaud that Australian flag. There are 85,000 people here and one Aussie flag. So we went over there and we start, brilliant, brilliant. The whole side of that stadium started applauding us. It's like, all right, boys, let's go the other side. So we went to the other side of the ground and applauded them. After the game, somebody, a fan, came over to Raul Blanco, who's Argentinian, understood what he was saying and said, will you have my watch? And of course, Raul's going, no, no, it's all right, mate. I don't need your watch. He goes, no, seriously, I want, you, I want you to have my watch because you have taught us how to be humble. When we see that you've been knocked out of the World Cup and you applaud our crowd the way you did, out of respect for our team, you have taught us the biggest lesson. And I want to say thank you. Here's my watch. Thank goodness he didn't realise we went over to applaud that Aussie flag. He might not have given him his watch. Raul didn't take it. I think we'd gone from Sheila's Wobs and Poofters, uh, as Johnny Warren said. But this put us on the stage that we'd never seen before. It, it was a height that we were all dizzy going, wow. Um, we got photographers lining up for a photograph or an interview. We had to go knocking on everybody's door to get an interview. They were coming to us. This is like, could get used to this. This is all right. But as far as everyone else was concerned, I know people who in that second leg, the teacher stopped the class and let them watch the game on the telly because we were playing late at night. So they were at school. And they remind me of it today. I remember our teacher said, come on, come over here. This is your education. Sit down, shut up and watch this. So it was massive even though he'd left. And I say he, it was all about him. You know, when uh, David Beckham turned up with LA Galaxy, it was all about him too. He went to take a corner. 25,000 people went nuts. Mate, he's just taken a corner. Yeah, we don't care. It's David Beckham. They're superstars. They deserve all the money because they, uh, they bring so much to the game. <laughs>